yeah, so I uh, started a company called The Ready about 13 months ago. For the nine years before that, I ran a company called Undercurrent. And the arc of my life has been kind of a search for the most interesting problem. And I kept turning over stones. And then eventually, a few years ago, I turned over org design. And I was like, oh, that's it. Um, that's where all, you know, all of our sort of efforts as human beings come together, our ability to organize, to coordinate, to create solutions and get things done. Um, and well, now that we're facing all these challenges, it becomes kind of a, a white hot topic for, for me and for us. Um, and so I have the, the unique good fortune of doing a lot of speaking and writing and traveling, talking to people all around the world. And the question I ask everybody is basically I sit down with leaders and teams both and say, what's driving you crazy? What is slowing you down? What prevents you from doing the best work of your life? What is, what's in your way at work? And I hear uh, three answers remarkably consistently, no matter where I go. I, you know, no joke in the last 90 days, I've heard this from the Prince of Sweden and the head of a nonprofit in the Bay Area. And it's one, pace of change, both internally and externally, just feeling like they can't keep up, they can't process it, the, the meetings, the emails, the information overload, the, the sort of death by a thousand cuts of all the other people moving laterally and vertically into their space. Um, so there's a pace of change challenge that we all struggle with. Uh, complexity, complexity of scale or scaling. So having no idea how to make sense of the machines that we've created, how to get people to work and coordinate in the right way, how to navigate the functional matrix, or as I like to call it, the Rubik's Cube of death. And, um, and so, you know, that, that's presently felt by everybody, even really small companies now who are going, you know, from 50 to 500 employees in a year, just feeling enormous complexity. And then the last one is this sort of culture of command, the idea that somehow having cultures about controls, predict and control, plan, hierarchical decision making, all that kind of stuff sort of feels like a real rigid, you know, slowing us down, preventing us from, from our potential. And when I then ask teams the follow-up question, which is like, okay, so what do we do to fix this? Whose fault is this? What's happening? Uh, I only get one of two answers. When I ask the leaders, they say, well, it's, our, we have, it's the people. We have the wrong people. We need different people. Our people's attitudes suck. They're, they're change averse. There's change fatigue. They, we need more digital people. We need more millennials. Millennials are lazy. Millennials are awesome. Um, and then when I ask the people, they say, well, the leaders. The leaders have got to go. The leaders suck. The leaders, you know, don't see the future. They're not young enough. They're not old enough. They're not experienced enough. They're too inexperienced. That's the leaders we have to, to change. And in our actual work in the kind of coaching and changing of organizations and studying how certain organizations have managed to change and adapt over time, we've learned that it's actually neither one. Sure, there's probably a leader or two that could change. Sure, there's probably a set of skills that might need to adjust. But by and large, the people are not the problem. Um, people are chameleons, right? People are incredibly sophisticated at echoing and absorbing and interacting with a community, with an environment. And so we often talk about, I have this visual, I don't know if we can bring it up, but we often talk about the environment as an organizing operating system. Like how do we, what is the OS for the organization? And if you think about, you know, your phone has an OS, your computer has an OS, Microsoft obviously understands the concept of OS, but then you say, what is our organizational operating system? What are the simple rules that are so deeply embedded and so deeply held, the assumptions, the practices, the principles that make up who we are? That's, uh, that's this sort of unspoken, unrecognized area. And what we've done over the last year, which has been a really cool research project, is we've gone and talked to companies and organizations that have bucked the trend that are heavily adaptive, super fast, nimble, flexible, human, meaningful, purposeful places, and said, what's different about you? Like, what would you hold up as something that is unique about your way of working, your way of organizing? And every answer we get, we kind of capture and we, and we just loosely start to collect and group these things. And what we found after looking at over 100 examples is that they basically all coalesced around these nine areas. So this is not a Mises framework that covers everything about how you operate, but these seem to be the battlegrounds for the future of work. These are the areas where big changes are happening, seismic change is happening, and you either are winning because of what you're doing in these areas or you're, or you're failing or struggling because of what you're not doing or what you're doing in these areas. And so, basically, when we started to talk about this concept of, of today and creativity, we really started to think about you know, what is it at the operating system level or, you know, more normal person would say the cultural level 
that is either inhibiting or empowering creativity, right? So what is it about the way we meet, about the way we use and share information, about the way we distribute authority or don't, about how we talk about purpose and intent, all that stuff that actually is either, you know, kind of fueling and accelerating and empowering creativity or holding it back. And so that will be the subject of, of our breakout within whatever room we're in, we'll find out, um, will be to kind of probe that deeper by talking through the areas in this framework and any other kind of, you know, areas of navigation that we want to cover to get out a few key insights where we say, you know what, this is a nice big map, but these are the three areas where we feel like right now we're really missing it when it comes to creating, you know, more creativity, more sort of creative, hospitable workplaces and cultures. And then we will bring that back to the group for review and heckle. <laughs>